The kamikaze was a physical attack on an enemy warship by an airplane with no consideration for survival. This unconventional attack had a huge impact on the world. In this video, we will discuss various information about the kamikaze special attack team from various perspectives. In this first video, I will explain the circumstances that led to the start of the suicide attack and the plan. The idea of using airplanes to carry out body slamming attacks has actually existed for quite some time. In 1931, Aichiro Yao, a student at the Naval War College, presented his graduation thesis to the then Chief of Engineering of the Naval Air Headquarters, Isoroku Yamamoto, later Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Fleet, and asked for his opinion. It was at this time that Yao had a discussion with Yamamoto about body attacks by airplanes. Yamamoto told a newspaper reporter at the London Conference on Naval Disarmament in 1934, While I am in the Navy, I will carry out airplane strikes. If a captain shares his fate with his ship, so does an airplane. Incidentally, in the Japanese Navy, when a ship sinks, it is customary for the captain to die with the ship instead of escaping. In 1941, the Pacific War broke out. Initially, the Japanese army was advancing at a breakneck pace, but after a major defeat at the Battle of Midway, the American army began its offensive. On April 18, 1943, Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Fleet, Isoroku Yamamoto, was ambushed by an American aircraft that had intercepted his radio transmissions, and was shot down and killed in action. Attending Yamamoto's funeral, Yao recalled past discussions with Yamamoto about body attack aircraft. In June of the same year, Yao explained to Lt. Gen. Takijiro Onishi the concept of a special attack team with himself as its commander. Onishi replied that he understood the opinion, but that now was not the right time. In June 1944, the Imperial Japanese Navy suffered a devastating defeat in the Battle of the Marianas. In this defeat, it lost its three aircraft carriers and most of its aircraft. In addition, many of the veteran pilots were killed in the battle since the beginning of the war, exposing the fact that fighter pilots with inexperienced skills were completely incompetent against the U.S. Air Force. It is said that this was due in large part to the fact that the Zero Fighter, which had almost no radio technology, was fought almost entirely by individual skill, while the American aircraft were equipped with radios and fought as team players. In October 1944, Onishi was informally appointed Commander-in-Chief of the First Air Fleet. Onishi told General Toyota, Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Fleet, those who were as skilled as they were in the early days of the Great War were already dead. In fact, there are many air crews in the unit who can barely fly alone. Even if these people conducted lightning bombing, they would not be able to expect any results commensurate with the damage. I really don't think there is any other way but physical attack. But we can't carry out suicide attacks unless we create an atmosphere where people volunteer voluntarily, not by order. When Onishi arrived in the Philippines, he said, the base Air Force's immediate mission is to destroy the fly deck of enemy aircraft carriers. We can't get there in time with ordinary tactics. We need to keep our heads on straight. First of all, if we form a fighter squadron with heroes, the other squadrons will naturally follow. If the entire navy goes with this spirit, the army will follow suit, concluding that the only way to save the country was through desperate, physical warfare. In the Philippines, Onishi explained to Rear Admiral Toshihiko Odawara, Chief of Staff of the First Air Fleet, and other staff members why he was going on a suicide mission. I was in the munitions bureau, so I knew Japan's war potential, and heavy oil and gasoline would last less than six months and all functions would cease. We should end the war now. We must make peace, but we will counterattack with one blow at Leyte and make peace on seven to three terms to roll back the Japanese Empire to the time of the Manchurian incident. The Philippines would be the final battlefield. If we carry out suicide attacks, the Emperor will ask us to stop the war. This history of sacrifice will revive Japan, he explained. On October 19, 1944, Onishi, Lieutenant Colonel Asaki Tamai, the 201st Air Vice Commander, Chief of Staff Inokuchi, and Lieutenant Colonel Chuichi Yoshioka, 
The 26th Air Squadron Chief of Staff, gathered for a meeting on the formation of a suicide squadron. Onishi suggested, I don't think there's any other reliable way to disable the carrier than to have the Zero fighters carry 250 kg bombs and hit it with them. They all understood that the destructive power of the bombs would be greater if they were dropped from a higher altitude than if they were plunged with the planes. However, since there was no longer any hope for the conventional bombing method, they concluded that they should use a method that would ensure a hit even if it reduced the power slightly, body hit. In response to Inokuchi's request to select a commander from the Naval Academy, to my nominated Yukio Seiki, commander of the 301st Fighter Squadron. To my told Seiki, today, Director General Onishi came to the 201st Air Defense Base and expressed his desire to hit the fly deck of an aircraft carrier. I'd like you to be the commander of the suicide mission. According to Inaguchi, when Seiki was nominated, he pondered the matter on the spot and immediately replied, please let me do it. He also hesitated, saying, let me think about it for one night, instead of giving an immediate answer. However, Tamai further reminded him, what do you think, will you conquer it? Some accounts say that he replied with a single word, yes, I will. Tamai was relieved and said, please, I think we should have a marine in command first. It would be a great help if you were the first to go. It's a matter of morale for the whole army, he said, thanking Seiki. Afterwards, Demai, who had been entrusted with the organization of the suicide squadron, gathered 33 people, mostly 10th graders that he had trained, and said, Director General Onishi has ordered us to carry out the next operation. It is a suicide mission. The Zero fighters now at this base are to carry 250 kilograms of explosives and hit an enemy carrier. This was an impermanent task that could never be carried out alive, but it was something that had to be done. All of these actions and results will remain in the history of Japan. However, this is not an order, it is only a request from you, he said, inviting people to volunteer for suicide attacks. The crew members were momentarily shocked by the sudden call for volunteers for suicide missions. Could it be that even in this situation, where they were fighting to the death every day, they could no longer make it. The room was enveloped in a heavy atmosphere as they all remained silent for a while. Then the deputy chief called for volunteers again, saying, those who want to take the initiative in saving the country, please raise your hands. In his recollections after the war, Tomai said that when Onishi asked for volunteers after explaining his determination and necessity for suicide attacks, everyone's eyes sparkled with joyful excitement and they all raised their hands and volunteered. According to Yasuo Takahashi, who volunteered, I volunteered with all hands. According to Takeshi Inoue, who also volunteered, I thought that I would have to attack with my body in the field. I volunteered because I was familiar with my superior officer, Demai, so I didn't resist. On the other hand, there was a story that some of the volunteers were silent when they were told about the suicide missions and some of them raised their hands in a heavy voice when they had sorted out their feelings. Also, Demai, not the deputy director, asked again, Are you going? You're not going? Some of them testified that their hands went up immediately. Isamu Hamasaki, who volunteered, testified that he had no choice but to reluctantly raise his hand. In the end, a suicide squadron of 24 was formed from among the volunteers recruited in this way. As you can see, the testimonies at the time were quite mixed. Today, it is not clear what is correct. He suggested that the suicide squadron be called the Kamikaze Squadron, and Tomai agreed, saying, we must create a Kamikaze. Kamikaze refers to a typhoon that destroyed a fleet of Mongol ships that tried to invade Japan during the Kamakura period. People at the time believed that the kamikaze blew and protected Japan from the Mongol invasion. This is how the kamikaze suicide attacks were born. Onishi was pessimistic about the outcome of the war, and was hoping for a kamikaze suicide attack to improve the peace terms, not to win the war. In the next article, I will explain the actual results of kamikaze suicide attacks. If you enjoy this article, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button.